So in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a drum from an old door. Very cool, very something very different, but not just any old door. This is a hundred year old door. This is a very interesting project me and my nephew made a few years back. It was basically a door that was sent to me and um, we wanted to transform this into a custom drum, but utilize some of the hinges as part of the um, as, some, as some different parts on the snare drum. So just hang around to the end of the video and let me know what you think about um, the, the turnout of this drum. I'm going to post some pictures of it at the very end and let me know what you think. So we started out by bending all the nails up so we can hammer them straight back in um, to be able to get a, a smooth contact. That first board that we took off right now definitely we wasn't able to use but there's a lot of good wood here. The next step, you know, you want to have all your wood perfectly flat. And the only way that I know to do that is with a joiner. Run all the edges one side and then uh, multiple passes back and forth till you get everything 100% flat. Because you have your, bolt, your pieces, if they're not flat, um, you can't cut your angles correct, properly. Because it's not going to bed tight against the table saw. So run them multiple times on, on all the pieces, kind of determining which pieces we're gonna use at this point. We really don't know. We're just seeing which pieces actually look good. Um, after that, we set the table saw up, got one side straight, and then we're gonna square one side up. Um, and we've also checked these with a metal detector too because they were a lot of nails in this drum here. Um, then back to the joiner again, getting all sizes perfectly flat. And then <clears throat> now we're able to start cutting the angles on it, gluing it together one at a time, um, making sure that everything meets up properly. Then the next day we're able to um, start the milling process. And believe it or not, these metal straps right here work so much better than anything else I've ever found to use building drums with. And it's just. I found that you don't need a terrible lot of pressure as long as your angles are cut straight and your angles are right. You just want something that will snug it together and pull those angles enough to where it's super tight. Just for people that don't know, heart pine is one of the hardest woods to work with um, because it breaks, it chips really easy and you really have to take your time doing it. Um, heart pine drums, they look like no other, but they are they're twice as hard to build as a regular snare drum. This is probably one of my favorite parts too because you're left with, once you exfoliate the wood, you actually can see the true grain pattern starting to kind of show through. And there's a lot of satisfaction with this, but you gotta go super slow when you're milling the outside of hard pine. It will bust and chip and ruin your day very, very fast. So this is a contraption that I designed and laid out and built that would keep the drum straight, rolling it consistent, making it very easily to make your passes and where the wood will be even. Because doing this by hand, I found that it's very easy to be inconsistent and you want your shell to be exactly uniformed. Multiple passes are made of this, but you see we got to haven't quite taken enough off, so we had to go make another pass and this drum shell actually turned out to be really thin. Um, so with the multiple passes that were had to use, I had to actually bring this drum down to uh, it was roughly about just right under, right, right over a quarter inch, which is pretty, which is pretty thin for a segmented drum. I've been, I've made thinner. I've made them up to an eighth before, but I felt comfortable that we need to put some re rings. Uh, along the outside of it just to give it some strength and with the grain patterns run the same direction the re-rings are going to be just perfect so we put re-rings all the way around it um, clamping it up about probably um, I would say about an inch apart all the way across let it sit overnight and then we start laying out for hardware um, lay out each piece one at a time this uh, this is the one part that's kind of real tedious too because you know it's very easily to drill a hole where it does not need to be and this is not a painted shell this is natural finish so there's literally no room 
for screw ups and we also don't have another piece of this wood left so we have to be very very careful and I like doing all this stuff by hand my nephew Matt Culpepper was helping me do a lot of these videos he um, he had just an engineer mindset very good with his hands um, played guitar uh, tinkered around the drum some very creative uh, very determined and very anxious to just kind of get in and, and do it and that's what that's what I like um, after we finish cutting the outside edges, we would go to the inside. Now here's where we carefully go in and gouge and just let the grain pattern kind of speak. And you're almost kind of going in and carving with the grain pattern, kind of pulling out some of the softer wood, leaving some of the grain, how it would naturally be on the, on the side of the barn. Um, because where Mother Nature would naturally do this, it will actually pull out the softer piece of wood and leaving the grain pattern leaving the harder pieces we're trying to do that by hand to mimic it because there's no way to actually leave it the way it looks on the barn we have to mill it because we have to make it perfectly round so the drum heads will fit on it so the tricky part is to be able to get this hinge and make it mount on uh, on the drum where it sits flat so we're having to go in here and bend it and basically we're just gonna get a hammer and keep hammering it away and just kind of keep shaping it, bending it and fitting it towards. So when we fit it on the drum, it actually, it's fitting the concave of the drum, um, fitting tight because you don't want any gaps or nothing like that. Yeah, this is definitely fun. You know, we're having to sh shape this thing and I just want to be careful not to bend too much of the too much but at the same time to be able to get a nice concave where it sits flat against the drum shell and you know i really miss doing drums like this this is kind of where it's at this is where my heart's always been in this old this old lumber reclaiming some of the stuff here and using some of the artifacts that i find and incorporating into the drum it's kind of it's art you know Every drum is going to be completely different. It's not going to be just a repetition thing. This is just going to be very unique, very classy, I feel like. And, you know, Miss Kathy, when she sent me this door, um, she was just basically just be creative. Do what you feel like you can do with the drum. She didn't have any. Um, she didn't leave me with any instructions on what she wanted other than just a really cool instrument and that's what we love that's what i love to be able to just be creative and to do it fits you know do it do it's called whatever it needs to be um it's art you know and there's just something special about art and there's no other drum like this in the world that's it none um and that to me is very special you know very carefully position everything where it needs to be you got one shot at this and it has to be just right you can't redo it it's got to be perfect and i really we wanted to kind of tuck underneath the uh the hint the two gloves a little bit just kind of give it a little extra class i just almost kind of make like it was there all the time You know, just when we get it positioned exactly where we want it, um, we're just gonna put a little dot right there where we need to pre-drill it and kind of get all that set so that after we spray it and finish it, we can come back and put this on back after after we do it. So I'm not gonna try to spray back this. We're just marking everything and laying it out because once I spray the outside, I don't wanna try to drill into that shell. I want it to be completely finished. Notice that cedar table in the background there. That's one we was uh, made from an old cedar log that we was cutting to. We was making, I was making some of those right there and giving it to my family members at that point. I just really feel like that giving is a huge part of my testimony. That when you give, it just really opens up the floodgates from heaven, and you will receive. I've literally had three different shops given to me before of completely um, stock tools. This is a glazing compound that I use that just makes heart pine pop and it makes it look amazing. Not only that, but it just richens the depth of it. You know, we had to go back and re-sand some of the insides here because when we wop with some of the with a glue rag, it had just left a little residue on the drum shell. But this can be knocked off real easy just with a uh, palm sander. 
you know, sanding is a huge part of what makes the drums look amazing. And I want the insides to look just as good as the outsides. And of course, you know about the drum signature. August the 23rd, 2016. Everything buttoned together up really nice. Um, this is very fun. We decided to go with chrome, just kind of adds a little class to it. Um, the Danette R4. And here you go. There she is. In her, all her glory. She was very beautiful and very special to build. Just want to say thank you for watching the video and thanks for all my Patreons. And just um, thanks for everything that you do, guys. I love y'all. See ya.